Hey kids, Mr. Adam here. Books can provide some of the best adventures you can ever go on. Today we're reading Winged Wonders, Solving the Monarch Migration Mystery by Meeg Pincus. For centuries, up and down North America, every year brought a mystery. Monarch butterflies swooped in for a spell, like clockwork, from somewhere beyond, then disappeared as curiously as they came. Where do they go? People pondered from southern Canada, through the middle of the United States, and all the way to central Mexico. In 1976, the world finally learned the answer with a groundbreaking discovery. A one-of-a-kind insect journey, a remote roosting place, a small speck on the map, where millions of monarchs are drawn like magnets each winter. The Great Monarch Migration, the news stories called it. So who solved this age-old mystery? Who tracked these winged wonders from one end of the continent to the other? Who found their secret roosting place a marvel of nature? Was it Fred, the Canadian scientist, who spent 30 years studying the monarch mystery from his university lab? Who drove through the United States with Nora, his research partner wife, like detectives, trying to track the cagey creature's migration from Canada southward? Who tagged monarch's fragile wings, first with paint that faded, then with labels that plopped to the ground when wet, and finally with price tags that stuck? Was it Nora, master organizer of the monarch material they collected, who placed ads in newspapers near and far, seeking ordinary people to help by tagging monarch wings in their hometowns, who wrote newsletters and kept in touch with all those volunteers, who logged and mapped every tidbit of information they sent to the lab? Was it those dozens, then hundreds, then thousands of science teachers, backyard gardeners, and other curious souls who answered Nora's ads and became citizen scientists, who gently caught, tagged, and released the delicate dancing insects to help solve the migration mystery? Was it Ken, the American adventurer, spotted Nora's ad in a Mexico City newspaper while visiting there? who called her in Canada and agreed to follow the monarchs through Mexico where he didn't speak the language, who bumped along winding roads with his newlywed wife, Catalina, for nearly two years trying to track the butterfly's twisting trail. Was it the villagers and farmers of central Mexico who directed the couple to look higher, higher up into the thin air of the volcanic mountains and their Oyamal tree groves? who for generations welcomed monarchs as soaring spirits during autumn Dia de los Muertos celebrations, who held the whispered whereabouts of their winter roosting place. Was it Catalina, born and raised in Mexico, who introduced Ken to her beloved monarchs, who spoke with the locals in her Spanish dialect to guide their search, who kept 40 notebooks of meticulous monarch data, who first crunched through early morning snow high in the Sierra Madre Mountains into an Oyamal grove and exclaimed, I see them, I see them, up here. Was it Jim, the American science teacher, who with his students attached teeny tags to tiny wings, who caught and tagged the very monarch in a Minnesota goldenrod field that Fred later found among millions in a Mexican Oyamal grove, who gave Fred the proof he needed, that one teeny tag to announce the discovery of the great monarch migration. Yes, the answer is yes, all of them. The scientists, citizen scientists, the regular folks along the way played a part in this discovery. Each person, in small ways or large, helped answer that centuries old question. Where do they go? And now we know. Each year, millions of monarchs fly the same path, generation after generation, from southern Canada through the United States to roost for the winter in central Mexico's mountains. Then they journey north again, 
feasting on milkweed plants all along the way. However, Today, there's a new burning monarch question to be answered. How will they survive? Monarchs numbers have plummeted since the 1976 discovery, from at least a billion down to millions, a handful now to each hundred then. Chemical sprays destroy their milkweed plants, logging and farming threaten their oyamel groves, pollution disrupts the air and weather for their flights. So who can make a difference for the monarchs today? Who can preserve their landing spots and airstreams? Who can keep them alive? The answer is actually no mystery at all. The end. If you want to join us in learning more about butterflies, follow the link in the description to visit Mr. Adams Teachers Pay Teachers, where you can get the worksheets that we use to help us learn more about these beautiful creatures. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of Mr. Adam's adventures.